Hello and welcome to Downforce Update. I'm Nick James. Let's start off as we always do, talk about our sponsor, Autodromo. Autodromo, instruments for motoring. Check them out at facebook.com slash autodromomedia and autodromo.com. Really great stuff. Well, this is our second take of our ninth episode of Downforce Update because, well, the camera stopped rolling for some reason. We assume it's ghosts. That is the most likely explanation we could come up with. So, let's take it again. Starting off the news, we're going to do 2013 Car and North American Car and Truck of the Year nominees. Now, they have changed it from car and truck to car truck slash utility because last year, for 2012, the Range Rover Evoque won Truck of the Year, and well, we know that's not a truck. It's on a crossover platform, it's got a Turbo 4, it's, it's a posh, posh, posh crossover SUV. So uh, calling it truck utility, much smarter. Let's take a quick look at uh, some of the, on the list here, some of the highlights. Scion FRS, Subaru BRZ, it's twin, Porsche Boxster, SRT Viper, um, Cadillac ATS. Here are the three that I think are probably contenders for the actual final decision. North American Car of the Year 2013. Dodge Dart, Nissan Altima, Toyota Prius C. Dodge Dart, I have my issue with it uh, being, I mean, it's fat, great interior, great looking, well priced, uh, but it is a 10 year old Alfa Romeo. Engine is, platform, etc. I'm really not sure that is new enough for North American Car of the Year, but it gets a lot of attention. People really like it. It's got a lot of props. Did I just say props? Yes, I did. Nissan Altima. Here's one I've not driven. Not really sold on it either, but people seem to really like it. It seems to be a great, it's actually, you know, on paper, it's great. I think the new Nissan uh, grill is half of the new Lexus grill. Look at it, you know what I mean. The last one on the list that I would nominate, if I could choose, which I cannot, the Toyota Prius C. I just drove that last week. Love that dang thing. You can see my written review on downforcemotoring.com right now. Uh, I got 77 miles of the gallon of the dang thing when I was really diligent. When I drove it like I drive every, you know, sort of my day-to-day -day car, I got about 38, which is still pretty darn good. My Range Rover only gets 10. So a huge improvement there. Great looking, big interior, cheap, fuel efficient, boom, everything you want. Now to the truck utility category. Acura RDX, Audi Allroad, Nissan Pathfinder, Ram 1500, uh, Toyota RAV4 EV, etc. The one that I think will uh, probably pull out and take it away, the Ford Escape. Fuel efficient, great looking, well built, great interior, good price, etc. That's the one. I don't think there's much else on there that could uh, hold a candle to it. But we'll see. I've always been surprised the Hyundai Santa Fe just might take it. All right, moving on in the news. Tesla, our favorite EV company, has announced that they will be working on a 3 Series competitor for 2015, priced around through $30,000. As you might know, the Tesla Model S, their big sedan there, just went on sale about a week and a half ago. They have a Model X, not an S, an X, uh, crossover, sort of wagony thing that will be going on sale sooner than later. Um, same chassis, I believe, as the S. Uh, and then they will be having a smaller, more, uh, uh, gosh, what am I thinking of? High volume, there we go. Smaller, high volume vehicle uh, to compete with the 3 Series, but gosh, 30,000 bucks, that's what a 3 Series was uh, 10 years ago. So a lot cheaper, higher volume. Good, it's a good thing. We need to get EV prices down and we need to get the range up. Well, Tesla has gotten the range up, now bring the prices down. Um, there have been rumors that uh, the Nissan Leaf for 2015 might cost around what a, v a VW Golf costs, around 24,000 bucks. If they could do that, my goodness, they would probably fly off the shelf. Apparently that's what's really holding up customers right now, price. I think it'll be good. I look forward to it. As you might know, the Tesla Roadster, which was their small, their first car, no longer being made. So this new one would be the new small, small kid on the block, small sedan, maybe a coupe too. Last in the news, Nissan is sort of uh, 
pondering what they're going to do with the Z brand. Right now, automakers are fighting uphill against the federal uh, fuel economy standards and having a small sales, high fuel, you know, uh, consumption sports car like the Z, even though it is sort of their, it's sort of their nameplate. You know, they're just they're known. Nissan put their name on the map with the Z cars. Um, so they, they can't just get rid of it, so they need to do something with it to make it more fuel efficient. So what could they do? Turbo 4. But all Z cars have always had a six-cylinder. From time immemorial, an inline six or a V6, maybe they could change it to the 240SX, re give rebirth to that nameplate. Sure, they could, but then the Z goes away and that's their, they, that's their baby. So what do you do? I think Swallow your pride, put a turbo four under the hood of the Z car, and just, hey, this is the way it is, man. This is uh, the new world. Get used to it. Sometimes you have to forget tradition and modernize. I don't know. Uh, I, it's hard to say. Everybody's going to turbo fours. I love turbochargers. They don't do that great of fuel economy. It's almost like a trick. I feel like it's a trick. Like, hey, federal government. Yeah, we get great mileage because a computer told us so. But gosh, when you actually drive a turbo, if you get into it at all, your fuel economy goes in the toilet. So I think it's, uh, I love turbos because they provide a lot of power, but uh, goodness, I don't think they're quite giving us the fuel economy that we uh, believe they are. It's a whole nother topic there. Now we're giving rebirth to our last segment here that I have uh, brought back from the grave. Uh, I went on hiatus for a while or coma or whatever you want to call it. Bring a trailer park where I scour the internet for uh, nearly minutes to find a, a funny listing. Well, this one was uh, provided to us by a fellow automotive journalist and this ad comes from Detroit, Michigan Craigslist. Let's take a look at it. Chevrolet Latte. Ooh, for sale for $13,900. It's an Impala LT 2009. It's an excellent condition, I presume, just as excellent. Fewer than 60,000 miles. An all lather interior. Mmm. How badly have you laid in bed at night dreaming about having a Chevrolet with an all lather interior? I know I have. My goodness. You know what? If you live in Detroit, Michigan, and you can't spell Chevrolet correctly, You've got another thing coming, my friend. That, you know, I'm going to put my Chevrolet on the internet. The series of tubes that the George Bush was beat to the punch to invent by Al Gore, that monster. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> but anyway, if you're interested in a Chevrolet with all lather interior, there's an excellente condition. Look that one up. Last on uh, the leaderboard here. What does that even mean? I don't know. We have press car of the week. I've made mention about a lot of my press cars that I've had in our hiatus. And uh, well, the new one we have right now, the 2012 Scion TC, 23 MPG City, 31 highway. It's got a 2.5 liter inline four cylinder engine with a six speed automatic transmission. $22,895 MSRP. I really like this car. I would probably own this car if the Scion FRS didn't exist. So I think that's the TC's new uh, Achilles heel. I don't know how much longer it'll exist. Maybe it has its own little niche in the Scion community. I don't know. But uh, with a rear-wheel drive, better looking version with more horsepower, I think this thing might go the way of the Buffalo. I really like it, would buy an automatic myself. Doesn't have B it doesn't have Bluetooth for 22 grand. I don't know why it should, but uh, it's good. While we're talking about Scions, though, I wanted to let you know we will be driving the 2013 Scion FRS later this month. That's right, we're doing a very special review video. So I'd like to know, while I'm planning, writing, scripting, all that good stuff, what do you want to see me do, say, etc.? What do you want to know about the Scion FRS? I really want to fill you in. I'm going to try to make it as entertaining as possible, but heck, if I can hit on something you'd like to know, shoot me an email. Why don't we do the uh, same email as we do for Bring a Trailer Park. Bring a, bring a trailer park at gmail.com. Only one of you has ever written me there. Hey, send me stuff. You know, it'd be like a uh, car talk. Send me whatever you want. Fill up my day with your bullshit. Okay, I think that wraps up everything. For Downforce Motoring, I'm Nick Jaynes. This has been Downforce Update.
Thanks for watching.